after the other. You stay as long as you like. You see as much as you like. When you've seen the same act come to the stage for the second time, you know you've seen the whole complete show. Please exit the way you came in. Welcome, one and all. My name is Todd Robbins, and I want to welcome you to the very first sideshow gathering. Yeah, well, sure, sure. Uh, this is all put together by a great guy named Franco, who you can't miss. He's running around here, and uh, he's in uh, about four places at one time. And he asked me to be the uh, the MC, the mental case for the uh, uh, the sideshow gathering here, and introduce the performers uh, that are going to be on the stage here. We've got a great lineup. If you don't have one of the schedules, out in the lobby there, it has a schedule of all the performers for the next two or three days uh, of the great things coming up here. Uh, I just want to let you know what we are doing here, in case there's anyone who doesn't know. We are here to celebrate all things of that strange and unusual form of entertainment known as the sideshow, the freak show, the 10 and 1. And by doing so, if you're going to do that kind of thing, well, you have to honor the man who's done so much for this, uh, this end of the business. I refer to the one and only Mr. Ward Hall, who's trying to hide. Right there. Right there. We're gonna we're gonna have some fun here. There's no two ways about it, and uh, we're gonna have a little honorary, uh, a little breakfast on Sunday, and uh, pay tribute to Ward as as should be fit, and with a little bit of a roast. As a matter of fact, I'm putting that together. So if those of you that would like to say a word or two about Ward on Sunday, please come to me, and we will put you on the uh, the bill, as it were. Um, also, let you know that we're gonna be doing some rather historical things here. We have. Uh, Right over here is Dan Meyer. Say, wait to everyone, Dan. Dan has started up, yeah. For those of you that don't know, Dan has started up the Sword Swallowers Association over here. He's got all the information here. This is all part of the, uh, the convention here it is a gathering, and uh, tomorrow morning there's going to be all kinds of uh, symposiums and all kinds of things on dealing with that which is uh, glom and steel. Simple as that. And we have, uh, I mean, I, I don't think there's ever been so many sword swallowers in run, one room. And it's all, I've been looking around and seeing all these faces and it's great because we not only have uh, Red Stewart here, but we also have Red Trower. And everyone knows two Reds are better than one. So, just like comedy. So, so anyway, uh, you also are going to see some strange and unusual things. We've got some amazing exhibits set up here. By all means, Go around, take a look at all the people that brought stuff. Bob Blackmar's got some great things over here. We've got art, we've got everything you can imagine. James Taylor is over here with all the great books and things. By all means, go over and see UC Studios. You're going to see things there that you're not going to see anywhere else. And I'm not just saying that because that's my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law. No, sir. They've got some great stuff over there. Um, now, already, we're getting some good feedback on this. <laughs> so, uh, is that? OK, yeah. Fine. Anyway, uh, I would just also like to say that we also have some exhibits, oddities out in the hallway there. Take a look at that. And to set the tone for what we're going to do here is my privilege to present to all of you connoisseurs of the strange and the unusual, the most disturbing of all the sights. I'm going to present something that once seen will never be forgotten. It is a sight so disturbing that children might not want to see this if they're under 16 years old. Ladies, if you're in the family way, you might not want to see this, or if you have a heart condition, this is not for you. You might want to leave the room. Because I'm presenting right here and now, on this very stage, a creature so feared, a creature of lore, but does exist. It was captured in the hills outside of Branson, Missouri, and brought here, <laughs> kicking and screaming. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready, and let me ask you, if you're ready for this, let me hear you say yes. Yeah. Yeah. I give you the six-foot man-eating chicken. Bring it out, the six-foot man-eating chicken. There he is. <laughs> They're laughing with you, not at you. It's okay. It's a good thing. Okay, down, boy. There you go. The six-foot man-eating chicken, ladies and gentlemen. You're, uh, by the way, that's, that's everyone's friend, AJ. If you haven't met AJ, you will by the end of the weekend. He is a, a, a wonderful performer, 
and a best-selling author. As a matter of fact, he's going to have his book, The Golden Rule of Schmoozing, available here. And it sounds like a joke, but it is one of the best books on how to deal with other people. It will help you in your business for all your performance. If you don't have a copy, you need to get a copy, and he'll autograph it for you. He's also got the, the tape, uh, the book on tape version of it, uh, which was read by uh, Penn Gillette. So anyway, you might want to check that out. Now, so much for that. You're also going to see, as I say, on this stage, some wonderful performers of the current generation of sideshow stars. And to start things off here, I want to do just a little performance. I'm doing some stuff tomorrow night, but I want to do something kind of special and uh, kind of give you a, show you where some of the things came from. Some of the things that we do are going to be doing on this stage go back generations. Some go back centuries. Some have all but been forgotten. And it's often very hard to say who was the first sword swallower or who was the first person to do this or that. But there is one person we can point to who is very special and a friend to many people in the room here. In 1929, a man by the name of Melvin Burkhart took a uh, torture stunt from the fake years of India and he turned it into a joyously gut-wrenching act that he did for over 60 years. When he was performing for Robert Ripley in the 1930s, Robert Ripley saw him and said, Melvin, you're a human blockhead. And the name has stuck ever since. In honor of Melvin, I'm going to do the human blockhead, if I could get through it, because... Melvin was a very good friend of mine. He was a mentor of mine. And uh, I'm very proud to say that his last performance was uh, at my wedding. It was one month before he died at 94 years old, back in November. Um, the honor of my life was when I received a package from Joyce and uh, Bonnie, his uh, widow and, and his daughter, saying, Melvin wanted you to have this. And I opened it up. I don't know if I'm gonna... Franco asked me to bring these. And... <laughs> he, um... He asked me to do, though he knew I did a blockhead routine and almost everyone here has their own variation on it, he asked me to do Melvin's routine with his props. And uh, I will give it a try. As I said, I kind of hope I can get through this. I didn't realize it was going to be uh, so, uh, so trying for me. The only prop I'm not going to use is his friggin' nail. <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons. For those of you that don't know the history behind this, Melvin, when he was just a kid, was an amateur boxer and he got his, he was not very good, yeah, let's put it that way. And uh, he got his nose broken so many times that when he was just a teenager, he had to have oral uh, uh, nasal surgery done. And that's what gave him the idea. He saw someone doing this stunt as part of a, a fake hair act, a, a pain proof man act. And he thought, well, I could make that into something. And he remembered the surgery that he had a number of years before and all the tools and everything that went in there. And he thought, well, I must have enough room up there to do it. And he started doing this act. And uh, I'm going to show you right here and now why they call me the human blockhead. I'm going to take this ice pick and I'm going to jab it into my head and then I'm going to drop dead. <laughs> you know, the, the other evening, a woman said, never mind the ice pick, just drop dead. <laughs> I didn't do it. My mama didn't raise no fools, I don't think. So you might not want to watch. If you feign easy, you might not want to watch when I do this. You might think it's real. Still, other people faint at the sight of blood. <laughs> that was a dirty laugh. I'll have it dry cleaned. So watch or don't watch when I do this. Ah. Might as well watch, you paid for it. Yeah. Ah. Now some of you might think that this collapses up into the handle or it's made out of rubber. That's awful hard rubber. So if that's the case, any of you think that, well, I got a uh, 10 cent nail, a 50 cent hammer, and a no sense head. I'm gonna draft, let me get one of my nails actually. Let's do a little smaller one here. I'm uh, going to drive this into the center of my head. Would you like to drive it in there? Do you have a driver's license? Uh, you do? Well, drive off, you bloodthirsty fiend. I was only joking. You have to be foolish to let anyone else do something like this. Oh! 
Oh, I hit a bone. Well, what do you expect from a bonehead? Ah, let's take it a little further. Ah, kind of feels good after it stops hurting. Yeah. Now my doctor said that's a good way to get iron into the system. And this is a good way to get iron out. Ah, and that's why they call me the human blockhead. That's a hard way to make an easy living. Yeah. Well, that was basically Melvin's routine. That was one of several routines that he would do in the side show. He would do the anatomical wonder, where he'd bend and stretch and twist and contort his body. He'd smile on one side of the face and frown on the other, do two face men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really great what you're going to be seeing here in these couple of days. You are going to see people do their own variations of these classic stunts and, and show you what they've come up with. Uh, about 15 years ago, I kind of came up with something of my own that I'm kind of proud of. It involves a little balloon. Um, because the reason I do this, and back me up on this, everyone loves balloons, right? Yeah. yeah. Looks like a condom for a well-hung mouse, but I digress. Have you ever seen anyone twist one of these things into a cute little doggy? Yeah. I only know one balloon figure. I've just gotten started with this kind of thing. I only know when I do one balloon figure, one balloon animal. I hope you know what it is. And that's it. That's the only figure I know. It, it, it's a tadpole. Right. Yeah, yeah. My ass. Anyway, um, that's the only balloon animal I know how to do. But there is one other thing I can do with a balloon. If I go like this, and 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 I do it one more time, it means nothing whatsoever. But it does allow the guy to I got to <laughs> and go like this. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> I have got to get a real job. <laughs> Wait. Hey. <laughs> some fun here. I just wanted to get things started and welcome you all in just a moment or two. Says Carney's going to come up here and do what he does so well and we'll see you all back then. And so take a look at all the uh, displays and stuff and I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much. <laughs> Man, I didn't think I was going to be able to get through that. Back here. Uh, <laughs> 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 Almost. Didn't think I was gonna.